Welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn De Guzman with investingnews.com. I'm speaking with Gordon Neal, CEO of World Copper. Um, how are you, Gordon? I'm excellent, thank you. Well, it's pretty busy here today at uh, PDAC. Yeah, thanks. So, so I guess my first question to you, you know, having been recently appointed as the CEO of the company, uh, our investors are probably going to be interested to know, provide some background about, about yourselves. Yeah, so um, I started in the uh, resorts business in 2003 as the VP of corporate development for Mag Silver. So I gravitated towards Silver Corp uh, and Re Thing uh, because um, uh, he has a, a really good way of running a silver company. And I was approached by um, Hank Van Alphen at um, Will Copper to um, to look at the CEO role for World, for World Copper. And I, I jumped from there to the CEO role of World Copper. And the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, so I'm here today. So what's your or first order of business as the new CEO? Um, first order of business is to clean up the balance sheet a bit. There's some debt in the balance sheet. I'm doing that right now. We've got a $4 million offering going right now. Half of that money is going to go to pay down the debt, and the other half will go for operations. Um, I'm also looking at sort of moving the company in a new direction. We have two assets in World Copper. One is the Escalona's asset in Chile, uh, and the other one is the Zonia asset in Arizona. I want to, uh, I, I want to move the company to a new place. And that place is actually, um, Escalona is, is a great asset. It, uh, it has uh, 426 million tons of o copper oxide, uh, almost 3.4 billion pounds. It's the largest development project, copper development project in Chile right now. However, um, it's in, infer in the inferred category and you need to move that to, to measured and indicated to have any kind of serious uh, interest in the project. Um, the Chilean government recently in November uh, put uh, Chile, uh, put Escalonas in a nature sanctuary. We're not 100% sure, sure what that means, but we do anticipate that getting permits for drilling will be even longer than they are now in Chile, which is 18 months. So it kind of impaired the asset a bit, I will admit. Um, there are some majors that are looking at it and... Uh, if they were interested in it, and if they become interested, it would be something that I would look at shedding. Uh, even though it's large and it does add uh, add, hour, add pounds of copper to our inventory. The Zonia asset is the one that interests me most. And what I want to do is move the company from where it is today to a U.S.-centric copper company. The U.S. government, the, uh, the Department of Energy, has made uh, has determined that uh, copper is a critical metal. And so there is lots of attention and funds are available for companies that are have the U.S. domicile project. So Arizona and it is the biggest copper state or one of the biggest copper producers in the world, that, that area. Uh, and it produces 71% of all of US, the U.S.'s copper. And so um, I would like to, to focus on Zonia and bring in more U.S. assets. But Zonia is interesting because it's it ticks all of the boxes for uh, a copper project that could go into pro go into production fairly quickly, uh, fairly cheaply, and um, economically. Uh, it's on private land, which I can get permitted easily. It has power on site. It has water on site. It is an oxide that's at surface. The strip ratio is one to one, and there's a billion pounds of uh, of copper in this. In, in the deposit so far. And that's just on the private land portion. We have three times the amount of land around. So I think my direct, my, my, my um, discussions with the board have been, let's put this thing into production. Now, having said that, it's important to remember, I come from a background of corporate development and putting things in, into development. So I'm going to get asked the question, so how do you put something into production if you haven't done that and the answer is, I've got four, I've, I've had two copper mine builders who approached me to build this mine, and they're serious mine builders. One of them has built, has built a Colorado, Carlotta mine in Arizona and built Sierra Gordon in Chile. And they're both SXEW mines, which uh, Zonia would be an SXEW uh, operation uh, as an oxide. And it's very environmentally friendly. You produce a cathode. There is no concentrate. 
Um, it has a much higher uh, percentage of environmental ability um, uh, attached to it. So uh, I think what, I, what I've suggested to the board is we move this thing down the development track, down, down to production. You know, at um, uh, 500, uh, 500 million tons at um, uh, 500 million tons at 0.37 uh, percent copper. Sorry, that's 0.3 percent copper. The school is 0.37. I'm just learning my numbers now because I'm new. But but uh, uh, with the with the fact that it's SSEW, you're going to be able to to um, to produce copper uh, from Zonia for 15 to 20 years. Uh, at fifty at fifty million pounds a year, so that's the focus. The focus is going to be on Zonia. We're going to bolt on. I would hope I'm looking at some other um, some other assets in the U.S. Uh, oxide assets, uh, but I want it to be a U.S. centric uh, U.S. centric copper company. Are you seeing some uh, like so obviously the the U.S. government this as you mentioned shoring up domestic supply. In terms of policies and with the permitting is one of the biggest challenges, I think, with the length of, of permitting. Are you seeing some improvements there that will enable, you know, for you to go uh, into production? Quickly? So, um, as I, I, did, I mentioned this before, but it's important. You're right. Permitting, I just learned today, too, that some permitting in Arizona is actually, um, you know, fairly tough. Uh, however, if you own private land, that's actually been already been operated. This was, Zonia was a, was already in operation as a copper mine in the '60s. So, um, so to get that permitted again is not that difficult. Uh, it's the time. It's not that time consuming because it's on private land. So, the permitting part for me is not is not is not is really one of those tick boxes that that's already been ticked. We can get it permitted fairly quickly and fairly easily on the private side. On the surrounding land, which is the BLM land around us, that will take us some years. But remember, if I'm starting this process of getting into the production now, the the uh, the fellow who's helping me do this, who who built Carlotta and Sierra Gordo, um, he sees this as being a, he can build this in he says three to four years. That's a very tight timeline. Um, the need for copper in the U.S. and around the world is 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 uh, quite substantial. So if I can get this thing into production and we're producing, you know, 40 to 50 bil- uh, mil- million tons, million pounds of copper a year, then I, I want to get it started. And, let it. and you mentioned this well, you know, one of your strategies to see about bring in more assets. So what's, uh, for, what's your strategy or criteria and looking at assets? Well, uh, I would prefer, again, <laughs> I'm kind of lucky that I haven't built a mine before, but I have mine builders who are working for me. Uh, so an SXEW plant is probably the easiest process you're going to go out on an open pit. Is a pro- on an oxide is the easiest is the easiest form of processing uh, copper. So I'd be looking for another copper oxide deposit or pro- property, I would say. I don't know if it's a deposit yet. I have my eye on a couple, uh, and we are in discussions uh, with a couple of groups. Um, but I would be looking at similar a uh, similar uh, profile as Zonia for the other assets in the United States. They're not easy to find. Uh, oxides at surface are, you know, they're mostly gone because they're easy pickings. But there are some around. So we're at NDAC, and you're obviously you're talking to investors. Uh, what do you say to them? What makes gold, copper, and compelling investment? Well. No? <laughs> the good thing about presenting these things or having these interviews is you get to say the same thing over and over again because what is compelling about what's most compelling about uh about world copper in, in my mind is zonia zonia is ticks to it ticks all of the boxes of of a a, a copper project or a deposit that is ready to go <laughs> the the costs are going to be low um, it's a it's a, uh, a quartz monzonite porphyry, where the acid consumption will be low, twenty five pounds per ton. Um, so it, 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 it's again private land, power is there, water is there, private. It's on private land. I can permit it really easily, 
SXEW. It's a very inexpensive, a least or less expensive way to process. I don't have a concentrate. I don't have any tailings because it's because I'm doing SXEW. It's more environmentally friendly. I would I would invest in this company because we've built mines before that are profitable, and this is an easy project to understand and to get down the road to uh, to economic viability. Well, well, thanks, Gordon, for joining me and taking the time to speaking with me today. Thanks for having me. Very exciting here. And uh, again, I'm very excited about joining World Copper. Uh, we're going to do great things. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And join us again next time for another engaging conversation on CEO Insights. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss future updates and interviews. See you next time.